this is Carl Ackerman from Think Tech Hawaii and Journeys. I am the host of Journeys of the Mind. And today we are with the wonderful Atina Pasqua from the University of Hawaii in civic engagement. And also my friend, Matthew Goldberg, um, who has written the book, Rings of Kindness. Um, today, we're gonna start off with Tina and her journey of the mind. And then hopefully, because this is a whole show on kindness, um, go to Matthew and talk about, again, his book, Rings of Kindness. So, Atina, let's start with you and ask you the question, um, how did you get to Hawaii and um, also to the University of Hawaii um, and become uh, involved with service learning and civic engagement? I know that's a big question, or I said, actually, it's three questions. How did I get to Hawaii? Um, it was... Uh... It, kindness was involved in it. I uh, I fell in love with a local guy uh, when I was in graduate school, and um, we decided to get married. And so I moved to um, Hawaii, and uh, we've been raising our family here uh, for over 30 years. Um, how I got to this position uh, is uh, faith, uh, faith that uh, there would be a perfect um Thing that would enter my life uh, through uh, working with higher education, uh, working with students. Um, I uh, was working on a task force to bring service learning to um, the islands. And um, this was with the University of Hawaii, uh, specifically the community colleges. And um, it was decided that they would create a, uh, a program uh, called service learning, and that um, there would also be an organization uh, called Hawaii Campus Compact, which would provide resources and technical assistance to the higher ed institutions to meet their mission of having civically engaged um, young people. Young, and so I, uh, I stepped up and I worked on this plan, and then wouldn't you know it, uh, when the position uh, came open to create the office. I took a leave of absence from my previous job at Honolulu Community College and, and uh, created uh, the service learning program at the University of Hawaii. And um, then was fortunate enough to be selected at, as the director of the program. And we've gone through different iterations of, of uh, the service learning program and of um, Hawaii Campus Compact. We're now Hawaii Pacific Islands Campus Compact. So we in, incorporate resources um, that are available to the U.S. territories in the Pacific, American Samoa, Guam, and Saipan, as well as uh, we've expanded our work through our service learning program to be civic and community engagement. I, I think the uh, that uh, offers us a broader scope of ways that we can uh, help our community and um, have expanded from only higher ed to K through higher ed uh, work uh, by being very involved with Youth Service Hawaii with you, Carl. So the brief synopsis of 30 years of work. That's, a, you know, that's quite, a, that's quite a mouthful. And also it talks about your extensive career. So what do you mean um, by service learning? Um, because you know, this is a whole show really about kindness, but what does service learning mean, Atina? How well, do you define it? Well, service learning is a teaching pedagogy that integrates or incorporates uh, hands-on service uh, work in, with nonprofit organizations uh, or um, government agencies. Um, and it allows young people, uh, it allows students to of all ages, okay, not just young, but all ages, to um, learn by uh, having hands-on experience helping in the community. So service learning, but first foremost, is a teaching pedagogy that incorporates um, reflection and uh, hands-on work in the community to make a difference. Well, you know, one of the reasons this show is so important is that, Atina, recently you became president of Youth Service Hawaii, and I am also for you know a member of this organization. But he became president of um, Youth Service Hawaii, and um, I'm going to talk about that a little bit more. But can you give us first an example of um, 
uh, service learning that you per that you you know about either from the university level, the high school level, the you know elementary school level, anywhere in the Pacific. Let's just get one example. An example of service learning. Uh huh. Okay. Um, sure. We have um, a large program at the University of Hawaii that is in conjunction with. Um, the uh, neighborhood of Pololo, which is uh, right down the road, and with Kapiolani Community College, um, where we have been bringing our students in all different uh, arenas. They could be taking a variety of different courses, and they would have an opportunity to go into this valley, into Pololo, to do um, service learning by working with elementary school kids, the middle school kids, or at the high school level um, to be tutors, uh, to help them with uh, accessing technology, um, with teaching some fun classes, perhaps hula, um, and just connecting with the community to uh, assist. It's, it's largely an, an immigrant population, low income. So just helping um, with the younger folks reaching reaching out to them while they are uh, going through their education process and then bringing that knowledge of the interactions with the with the kids uh, back into the classroom and saying well these are the challenges that I had in t tutoring uh, this kid with math and here I am in you know in calculus whatever 1000 whatever the calculus whatever the class is but being able to relate it to how we learn and how we uh, give back and and how we as human beings are there for each other to to uh, lift each other up. Well, I mean it, that's a tremendous um, example because <clears throat> first you're dealing with children and second you're dealing with children that come from an impoverished area and third you know you're talking about it with your students once they return to the classroom. So that's a very good definition. Now, most recently, Atina in New Service Hawaii, you've started you know. Um, a book sharing um, as a way to, you know, talk about not only uh, Youth Service Hawaii, but to give people who have written books that may not um, have great exposure. I mean, they're not they're you know they're they're not on the top New York bestselling list, but they're also uh, books that are um, you know widely popular. Um, and so, can you describe how you came up with this idea? Well, um, I enjoy reading and uh, talking to people about. Uh, books that I that I've come across and not necessarily bestsellers as you say and supporting especially um people who uh just just are speaking about um our you know to our hearts so um I thought that it would be wonderful to bring together uh youth service um and and perhaps individuals um that like Matt uh, that have written things uh, about um, how we uh, interact with one another and how we bring kindness into the world and and even um, how we might incorporate these these things into mysteries or whatever <laughs> um, whatever create creative uh, venues our minds uh, tend to go to. I have. Um, experience with uh, a gentleman who I was working with who wanted to write a police mystery, you know, set set in Hawaii, and it was about a detective, but the detective was doing good. And and so he wanted to take it out of his mind and, you know, put it down on paper. And I, I it just uh, came to me that this would be a wonderful way to expose people to books that they wouldn't normally um, be thinking of picking up. So it's wonderful that we have authors uh, like um, Matt Goldberg to to share, uh, you know, to share their words, you know, words of wisdom, and then we can help to spread that to um, uh, in any way we can. And so, if if we can uh, if we can do that, and if people would like to make um, donations to help this kind of idea uh, to keep growing, um, that that's wonderful too. So it's been kind of a little bit of a fundraising uh, idea, but uh, an opportunity to to speak with um, with authors. And the authors have been so fabulous. They've been sharing with the attendees how, if you have a book idea, how to get started. And, and that's just been an added bonus for the people that attend the discussions with the authors. That's really wonderful. I think you're referring to Bonnie Tramor, right? 
in yes. the discussion and then also to Eric Gray and his discussion of his baseball books. Yes. But this is a perfect segue. Okay, Matt, you're on. Um, tell us about your book and maybe read a story from one of your books. That'll and be maybe great. a story Thank that deals with kindness, of what's in <laughs> all your stories. Yeah. Thank you, Carl. Nice to meet you, Atina. Thank you for your nice words and the great things that you're doing uh, in the community. Rings of Kindness is a compilation of what came to be 85 true stories of kindness received from others. So it started as probably a speech that I was putting together, how even through these very challenging times of early pandemic, that we are surrounded by acts of kindness every day that aren't often highlighted by the news. That's not really the stories that often sell, but it shouldn't go unnoticed. So I wrote about an experience and I posted it on Facebook. I didn't think this would be a book uh, about a couple that found my wedding ring that got lost around a lake and they posted a sign. And I don't know if it was a heroic act of kindness, but um, I, I'm not doing justice to my story, but these were wonderful people just a mile away from me who I wouldn't have met otherwise, but for their act of kindness. And I tentatively titled it A Ring of Kindness. And then someone suggested to me that maybe this would make a great book idea. I wanted something that would be uplifting, maybe the sort of book that I would want to read. So I started putting out feelers for uh, for stories, true stories, kindness received, but not, uh, they didn't have to be from strangers or completely random, but not people we were closely, personally connected with at the time. Not a family member, a spouse, a significant other. I'm happy to say that through a mutual friend, I think you mentioned him, Eric Gray, uh, he contact, contacted Carl, who gave me a story titled Waves of Kindness. And the project just kind of kept building. And yeah, uh, very pleased with how it came out and the wonderful contributions I received from various writers, some, some who I had the pleasure of meeting through this project. That's a, you know, it's a great story and it's, uh, you know, a great book. So Thanks. here's what I'm going to ask you. First, given your first story about the ring, how did you get in contact with the people who found your ring? Because that's kind of unusual because you're, you're, you know, I, I assume you're talking about the lake that you walked around. Or yeah. 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 In this case, so uh, I think I was actually losing weight. I've since gained it back and washing my hands a hundred times a day, like we were all doing in 2020, hopefully we're still doing, uh, but it, it, it slipped off my finger and this, the ring almost never came out of, off my finger unless I needed to take it off for a medical procedure or something like that. And I more or less gave up on it because I didn't know that I lost it around this particular lake. And it was just, it was great timing and great fortune that they posted a sign on a tree that surrounded the lake ring found uh you know with their phone number it just so happened that they themselves were walking their dog as my wife my son and i were walking ours and they're right on the other side of the lake and it's not a, a large body of water we could have talked you know, with like Coke cans and string <laughs> they're just across the way and called the number and yeah, uh, we met them, arrived at their house and they were so delighted, so delighted to, to present me with my ring, which I really, really missed. And that was it. So it was, it was as much good fortune, honestly, as it was kindness, but I, they were just the nicest people that I would not have met otherwise. And when I first posted the story, I said, nice people really do abound in my town, but that could have stood for any town across the United States. Okay, Matt, I'm gonna ask you um, <clears throat> to give us a couple of more stories from your wonderful book, Rings of Kindness. Sure, thank you. May I read a story? And, sure, of course. And okay, the story I ended up putting, um, First in the book, in Act One, so to speak, is called Fresh Flowers at Vintage Vases. I never, vases, vases, I'll try vases. And it came to me from a woman named Wendy Hammer, 
not only a kind soul, but she's a brilliant actress, comedian, writer, and writing coach. And she brought other people to the project. So here we go. Fresh flowers at vintage vases. In 2015, I was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. That's a cancer where when people hear about it, they're so freaked out, they actually say things like, oh, isn't that the one that is supposed to kill you? I am so not kidding about this. Anyway, this very cool woman who was not a close friend, but rather a writing colleague that I really admired, left fresh flowers in a vintage crystal vase on the second floor doorstep of our Santa Monica apartment. The flowers were lovely, as was the vase, but what really blew me away was the act of sheer kindness. I was touched, moved to tears, strengthened by this gesture. I called to let her know that in the midst of medicine and tubes and painkillers, her gift of fresh flowers was just the self I needed on the biggest wound I'd ever had in my five decades on the planet, this owie called pancreatic cancer. So unbelievably sweet for you to think of me, Sonia, but I've got to get your vase back to you. Yes, you do, said the voice on the other end of the phone, and there was a pause. So I can refill it. Well, what? What do you mean? Well, my husband and I enjoy riding our bikes to the farmer's market each week for flowers, and I love to collect cool old glassware from estate sales and use them as vases. If you leave the vase on the porch, we will refill it. I was speechless. I barely knew this woman. Was it selfish of me to want more flowers? But I had already learned the first gift of cancer, let yourself receive. So I did as I was told. A few days later, I opened my front door to more fresh flowers in the same darling container. The very next week it happened again. And yet again, the flowers just kept coming. Each week, a variety of red, yellow, or multicolored daisies, tulips, daffodils, or wildflowers would magically appear in an equally beautiful jar or vase, filling our home with thoughtfulness and love. Was this chick for real? Was she robbing a shop, a flower shop, or frolicking <laughs> through my neighbor's gardens with cutting shears? No, nothing that diabolical. Sonia and her husband were something even more radical. They were simply kind. The, these flowers were vibrant and full of hope, which was just what I needed. Never knowing exactly when they might arrive filled me with anticipation and gratitude each time they did. This went on for nearly a year. I'm going to say that again in case you missed it. A year. I didn't know her and her husband all that well, but it was official. I was in love with both of them. How will I ever repay you, I asked. It's simple, was her reply. You will get better and do this for someone else. And she was right. That is exactly what came to pass. Next month, I will celebrate seven years since I was diagnosed and six years cancer-free. When I completed my treatment, my oncologist reviewed the scan, looked me in the eye, and proclaimed, Wendy, you're unremarkable. Unremarkable? Oh, that's what we call it when the scan has literally nothing to remark on. Who knew being called unremarkable would be the nicest thing anyone ever said to me? <laughs> I am crying as I write this, so grateful for my life and still in awe of fresh flowers on the doorstep, this ring of kindness that was put into play all those years ago. My neighbor Julie is recovering from COVID, so just yesterday I put a bunch of purple Lysianthesis, I hope I pronounced that right, in a cut glass vase and delivered them to her porch. The tradition continues. And that was by Wendy Hammers. Well, that is a lovely story and a remarkable story, to use that term. Yeah. Um, but yeah. what I what I want to ask you, Matt, is tell us kind of the array of different um acts of kindness. I mean, you know, you, yeah. you I think you you um segment your book by acts. So, I did, um, I did. And I'd like to say there was more of a rhyme of a reason to that, but I just wanted a nice flow. But there is a quite quite a variety from neighbors, from complete strangers, someone's first grade teacher that presented him with a book, the first book he ever had in his house with a nice note, 
Oh, in New York subways and subway stations, uh, one story uh, was during the horrors of the Holocaust, and they really came from all over, from Nova Scotia, Canada, uh, to a story from Queensland, Australia. So it was really quite a variety. Some happened in the workplace, in the neighborhood, in schools, uh, through community organizations, community service organizations. Uh, yeah, I was very pleased. And one thing that came to mind to me, I think the lesson is maybe there are several and I, I have little quotes, some from famous people, some from me, uh, heading each of the chapters. But to me, it all starts with empathy and putting ourselves in the position of others, whether we knew these people before, they could be our brothers, our sisters, our parents, our close friends. And the acts are just as important, feel just as good for the giver as they do for the recipient. And sometimes they also create a culture of kindness and ripple effects. Uh, one of the questions I asked uh, that, that came from writing the book, I didn't really ask it beforehand. If we knew the effect of our acts of kindness and every story was written from the point of view of the recipient, or maybe a witness to an act. If we knew how powerful these were to the recipients, wouldn't we be performing even more of them? And often we don't even have to go that far out of our way uh, to do so and really give someone, you know, that spiritual lift that, that we all could use from time to time. You know, Matt, uh, 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 Matthew, I, I, uh, one of the things that, you know, sparked my interest is, okay, let's, let's hear about the subway story. Okay. The New York okay. subway story. I mean, you don't have to read it, but you can just give oh. us an overview. Or you can yeah. read it if you have time. I don't know. I don't know if there's time. I don't want to monopolize, but <laughs> I, I can see if I could stick it in. But, well, I, what I'll tell you more generally, Carl, uh, I know one of the stories was, oh, a gentleman, New York, so he's a Philly guy like me, <laughs> John Childress. Uh, he he fell on the stairs leading to the subway in inclement weather, and three total strangers just took absolutely good, you know, care of him during that situation. Came to him, made sure he had his belongings, you know, made call to emergency services, you know, stood with him as he waited for the ambulance. Uh, I may not be doing total justice. Uh, two other stories. One was a woman, also an actress, now in the LA area. Uh, she was a student at the time and she was, you know, attacked on the subway and was obviously very, very distraught. And an older gentleman kind of came over and instantly, you know, took her by the arm, walked with her all the way to her school to make sure she was okay. And she was always, uh, she was also sweating out uh, a production that she was auditioning for. And he even, you know, he even stayed with her, assured her, you're going to get the part. I just know, I just know. And that was, you know, her guardian angel in that moment. And she got the part and she's become a, you know, a, a very noted actress. Uh, I believe there was even one more on a New York subway session. Who could figure, but we really are surrounded. There, there are great people out there uh, who, who want to be of service to one another so um i'm going to go back to atina now uh, matthew this is wonderful from your book rings of kindness thanks i know you have it behind you i'm just going to display it i'll see if i can get it get it in focus who knows rings of kindness i don't know if i'm successful there we go <laughs> okay um thanks. but atina how do you i mean do you sometimes talk about kindness um in terms of service learning i mean do you is that something that comes up often, um, you know, in your discussions with your students, whether that be, you know, I mean, your specific students or students in general through the University of Hawaii, um, either, you know, at the high school level, at the college level, at the elementary school level, in the middle of the Pacific? Yes, we do. Uh, we do talk about uh, kindness. I think with uh, the younger generation, uh, they know the phrase random acts of kindness. And um, that ends up happening um, quite a bit, as uh, Matthew had said. But we um, we talk about how um, the reason why we are here on this planet is to uh, be there for each other. And um, that starts with just being kind. It's as simple uh, as that. Um, we do discuss it quite a bit. Uh, <clears throat> but also the 
we we talk about uh, what is the what is the way that they want to uh, be of service and and be kind. Um, so our students often lead into well, I'm not good at X, Y, or Z, but I am good at Y. And so we we try to uh, tell them that well, then take your gifts and share them and just be kind. Um, and um, you'll be surprised at how much you get back from the interaction that, that you'll have. Um, yeah, it's, been, it's a very gratifying way to teach with service learning. Um, it just helps expand everyone's, not only their knowledge, but um, the, the way that they see their, um, their role in, in humanity, yeah and by being by being kind people so yeah we do we do we do talk about that but thanks for thanks for asking even though in education we do we do focus in on what did you learn what did you learn <laughs> but um uh, hopefully they are uh, our students are learning um how to be kind to to each other and so um matthew i'm going to uh, turn the question in the opposite end to you is that you know um how do you see, have, you know, being sort of an expert on kindness, I mean, just because you've seen a lot of people um, act out their kind endeavors, um, you know, how do you think that service learning adds to the overall picture of the rings of kindness? Great question. Yeah, I, I think it complements idea. I, I, I think volunteerism is... I box myself in on that sentence is an act of kindness it is and I think service learning uh, to me I mean I think the two go hand in hand whenever we have interactions with, with one another we learn from them uh, even the not so positive interactions that won't be found <laughs> you know in my book or maybe the Tina's experience but but we learn from them we're, we're human and we want I think most people really do want to be a service to one another and sometimes don't really know how, if that makes any sense. And with my book, my book, it just shows these stories illustrate that the little things, again, make such a huge difference and just uplift everyone's spirit. So I, I think the two ideas, it's a great program, are, are very, very compatible. Well, on that note, since we've combined both service learning and kindness, um, I want to thank Matthew Goldberg and Rings of Kindness, his wonderful book, and Atina Pasqua from the, um, the multi-layered Atina Pasqua, who has been involved in many things um, at the University of Hawaii and elsewhere. And um, just say, as Atina so eloquently said, um, if people would like to contribute to Think Tech Hawaii, Think Tech Hawaii uh, they could just you know, go online and do that, and or, and or um, use Service Hawaii. So, um, ahui ho. Thank you very much for watching Journeys of the Mind. This is Carl Ackerman, host.